do you think when you know other people that are in that that same age bracket that are making decisions especially men that we're um we've got so many that are isolated now you've got the the number of uh, suicides among males, especially in that 30 to, to 45 year old age bracket, is up. One of the things we were talking with a guy named Stephen Mansfield, who's a is a best selling author, a few weeks ago, said that most of the notes that they're seeing now, especially over in the UK, is that like no other man knows what I'm going through. How can mm. this be? We've got a lot of guys that are wrestling with faith. Several that we've put just at the cusp. But they're like, I I realize that I'm a sinner in need of repentance. I realize that Christ died for my sins. I just can't hit that jumping off point to believe in the resurrected Savior. What would you tell somebody? What is it that made the difference in your life to be able to not just, you know, have the recognition of the need for the Savior, but also then to really jump off into the belief and and what made the difference for you? You know, that day that I was that, that I was saved, um, Personally, I I felt something inside the day that I heard that, you know, the pastor speak. And when he said, you know, those of you that haven't invited Christ into your life, I mean, I felt something inside that day that I'd never felt before. And I knew that I needed what Christ had to offer. And I'd never felt that before. And, you know, I couldn't even fight back the emotions that I was feeling. And tears were flowing down my, my eyes. And I knew that day that, you know, that I needed Christ in my life. And, and I immediately after that day got involved in Bible studies and started going and got surrounded myself with, with, uh, other people that, you know, could hold me accountable. And, you know, I got plugged in and if, you know, you, if you try to do this all on your own, I think you're, you're just asking for trouble. I mean, you, you can't, do this by yourself so once you become a christian you need to start taking those steps forward and and have an accountability partner and having people that you can call on when you're going through those tough times and try not to battle that those battles by yourself have somebody that you can get on the phone with and and call and talk to through those tough times and accountability partners that you can that you can count on that will pick up their phone when you're struggling and and having tough times like that that can walk you through those those battles because we all have them even now that you know i've been a christian for 20 years i still go through tough times we all do and it's great to be able to pick up the phone and say hey buddy let's go have a cup of coffee i need to talk to somebody yeah i think that that's a really important thing we're we're discovering that more and more and mm-hmm. uh you know, not just the the sense that it's something that's necessary but we have to work to build that because it's as we become more detached or more career oriented or things like that, it's it's easier and easier for us to isolate from everybody else versus engage. And I think the the pandemic has done a wonderfully awesome slash terrible job of pointing out in all of us the, the mm-hmm. disengagement and the need for community. Yeah. Um, I, I do have a couple of questions about the way that you wrote the book. The book is a series of stories. And I'm I'm curious because some of them seem like they're in chronological order and others it seems like you you start a story um, after you've given a couple of chapters of background that hops into to another area. Have you thought about um, be, because everything in here is interesting and I always feel like whenever I, I say feel like as I finished each chapter, I wanted more detail. Have you have you thought about doing like the the memoir of the where we where we start with you know the NCAA the the collegiate career and some childhood stuff into where you are now um, giving some of the full details of it because there are some details about you know what happened with the WWE and you know that up and down struggle that you had where things were at with Team Impact but also you're very transparent in this book about uh, your your divorce and some of the things that happened there and meeting your your new wife and um, who Daisy's amazing I've gotten to see a, you know you two grow together and a lot of the stuff on uh, your your social media pages and it was one of the things that encouraged me getting married at, at 34 um, that like there is still the potential for good, healthy relationship, even even though I spent all of these years as a single guy in, in pursuit of completely different things than what I was looking at. Then. In your old age, yeah, in my old, in my wife said it's in my advanced age, yeah. as my <laughs> wife told me. Um, 
So you've, you've got a couple good years ahead yeah, of you still. Yeah, maybe one or two left. So, um, but have you have you thought about that? And uh, the the follow up question to that is, what would you what would you tell men that are in you know that that situation? And maybe this is a, a separate topic to get into of uh, that. You know they are they've experienced divorce they're in that spot now and they're they're looking to move on we've had a couple of widowers on we've got some mm-hmm. friends that have been divorced within the past couple of years that are believers and they're trying to figure out what life looks like now post that and, and what advice might you give to those guys well um you know at the time you just think that you know things can't things can't get any better or things can't get better and you know, your life at the end and it was just such a dark time going through it at the time that you're just in such a such a bad place um it's just so hard and i remember being on the road you know during that time and and leaning on some of you guys that were on the road with me and um just battling some of those emotions and then, you know, just staying in the word and, and just staying positive through those times and just leaning on and God through those times, knowing that he's going to bring the right person to you at the right time and knowing and trusting in him for it and not going out and trying to search for your own happiness, but leaning on the Lord for it. And I think that's the biggest advice I could give to somebody. I think so many guys try to go out and force a relationship or, or force their own happiness. And they try to like, I'm going to go find my happiness. I'm going to go out party and I'm going to go out drinking. I'm going to find my happiness through, um, and they try to just, they try to make it themselves instead of just living day to day, like they're supposed to and serving the Lord every single day and just trusting that he's going to bring that happiness to them when it's the right time in the right place. And if you just do it the right way, God's going to make it happen and it's going to make it happen the right way. I think that that's a very sage for, um, for most of us. I mean, there's as, especially as a pastor, there's some instances where I feel like I'm just at a loss because there's there's some things that only experience can can teach us as you walk through and it's different from me saying no you need to stay in the word you need to do this you need to just yeah. continue to be rooted um versus to to see somebody that has walked through it and on the other side like you who who got is just completely and tremendously blessed with uh with the family and stuff that they've got um not just to mention everything that you've got behind you with all of the other things where you can just point to and be like, this, these are the things that happened because I was honoring the Lord. He opened up these opportunities for me, which has just been absolutely awesome. Well, Ron, and you don't understand it. You don't understand what's happening at the time. And you don't, you, you know, you don't understand a thing until you look back afterwards and you say, you know, it's, it's so clear afterwards when you're looking back at your life. But at the time you totally don't understand a thing but it's not for you to understand until, until the end, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Hey man, I, I really appreciate the time. I know we said we were going to hold you for about a half hour and we've gone over that <laughs> just a little bit. So we want to let All you good, get back brother. with your family, but Ron, thanks so much for coming on and thanks for uh, chatting with our audience. Make sure you go check out ronwaterman.com where you can get uh, the book tapped out by Jesus, as well as some of the H2O gear that's still out there. Um, where can we find you on, uh, on maybe Instagram, Twitter? I saw that your last, your last tweet is up there on your site. Um, so what are your, what are your handles so we can find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at just Ron Waterman and also on Instagram. Um, I think I'm Ron H2O man as well on Instagram. Nice. And so if people are in the Colorado area and they are looking for the most intimidating realtor out there, they can also (laughs) check out, uh, H2O man realty. There you go. (laughs) Well, Hey Ron, we really appreciate the time, man. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks for coming. If you're ever in town, we can do a special episode where you punch me in the face for those terrible (laughs) jokes. (laughs) I'd really just choke you out. Dan Lee had, um, some, some alternate titles, that he was wondering that if these were some things that you had considered for your book title, your book tapped out by Jesus from the cage to the cross um, is available on Amazon and on your website. You can actually get an autographed copy on your website. And, uh, and Danley had made a list 
of alternate book titles and he was asking me about this no, in the pre-show no, and I was no, like I think you I'm should pitch them. them to Ron for the sequel so go go ahead you you had a couple of things you wanted to share I, with I Ron. don't know what he's talking about yes you, <laughs> <laughs> you sir, I've got a list in front of me <laughs> okay uh well wrestling with faith is one where where you can now like you're See, he's gonna punch me he's gonna yeah. find me and punch well now me. now that he's <laughs> now that he's got that one the sequel wrestling with faith you know, can then G- be a little G- bit you know, more jesus, in depth. jesus said to forgive others <laughs> <laughs> love your neighbor as yourself don't don't put them in a key lock that would be that would be a, a good thing um I, I punched do, in the spirit was the other one. I <laughs> I think that those could could work as alternative titles. Yeah.